In this problem, we want to find the inverse function of f of x equals x plus 3 to the third. So we, uh, we want to find the inverse. So the first step that we want to take when finding inverse is replace f of x with y. And then after you do that, you want to then flip the x and y, and we're going to resolve for y. So I'm going to take the x and put it over here and put in y over here. And then we solve for y. So we are going to take the cube root of both sides because I have that y plus 3 underneath that exponent of 3. So to undo the exponent of the 3, I want to take the cube root. So I'm going to have the cube root of x equals y plus 3. And then I want to solve for y by subtracting 3. So y equals the cube root of x minus 3. When you're done, so we've solved for y, we want to replace y with the inverse. So we want to replace it with f of negative 1 of x equal to the cube root of x minus 3. And there it is. <clears throat> we get the inverse of the cube root of x minus 3. Now what a way to check your work is you could actually take the inverse and plug it back in and look what happens. So I want to just do that real fast just to kind of show you um, that's going to be so I'm going to take the inverse and plug it back in for x. So I'm going to have the cube root of x minus 3 plus 3. Because what you're actually doing is you are taking the uh, you're, you could verify it by taking the composition of the of the uh, of the inverse in the function. So minus three plus three is zero. So then we have the cube root of x raised to the third. Cube root of x raised to the third is just x. So there it is. Um, so when you get back that x value, then then that means that it is the inverse. So that's just a nice little way to check your work that you could actually take the inverse, plug it back in, because you're essentially doing like this, taking g of x, the we call the inverse g of x, and plug it back in for x, and we should get back x, and we did. So there it is. So hope this helps.